Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Studio here in Lytham, and this is a rundown of the top 10 drivers I reviewed for 2016. These are my opinions, my views on the drivers that I've tested. And I'm also gonna do the irons coming next, that'll be in the next video. Let's start off with the first of the drivers in at 10. So in at number 10 is the Cobra King LTD. Now this was the driver which had the center of gravity very zeroed out. So it had a big hollow head with the space port at the bottom. Came in the pro version as well, which with less loft options and fade. Um, I found when I hit it in the right spot, it was a fly machine, but hit anywhere below center, it just never performed. But it still did what it, what it said, and it was a good performing driver. Um, here's a clip of me testing it just the back end of last year. So in at number nine is the Ben Ross HTX, and I'm gonna go with the Type R. That's the forward center of gravity. Now, Ben Ross is a UK company. It comes in at a lower price point than a lot of the drivers, but still, the results were fantastic. It looks very smart. I went with the Type R because it gave me the lower spin options, and with a good shaft, shaft and grip that it actually comes with it, I thought it was a good club. This was me hitting it a couple of months ago. So in at number eight is another Cobra driver. This was the Cobra F6 Plus. I like this driver a lot. It seemed to work really well. This was the one with the sliding weight that went from front to back, but in a slight diagonal manner. Uh, offered a very low spinning or penetrating setting instead of towering. Uh, really like this driver, I like the look of it. It seemed to work very well. Very similar to the BioCell driver that came out last year. And it, it was a bit of a fly machine. Here was a clip of me hitting it. Uh, I think I was here actually hitting it on GC2. So number seven might be a shock to a lot of you is the TaylorMade M1. Now you might know I use the M1. I've had it in my bag for since September last year. Um, I really like this driver. I love the look of the head, the multi-composite crown. I love the fact that it's black and the white and the, the weight's been stripped from the, the top and stuck in the bottom. What I found though, is that the weights didn't really change the dial that much. So the front, the sliding T-bar didn't really change the dial that much. And the price, wow expensive compared to another one that came out which might rank a little bit higher. So the TaylorMade M1, I thought it was a fantastic driver. I'm still using it in my bag. I just found that the adjustability didn't really change the game that much and the price point was really high, but still a very good driver. Actually, it was out in Connecticut when I hit this for, for the very first time. So number six is the Callaway Great Big Bertha. Now this was a bit of a shock release. Callaway have brought out quite a few of the drivers over the last 12 months or so. And the Callaway Great Big Bertha was a real shock to me. The one with the comic design at the bottom and the slidable weight around the back of the driver. Massive big footprint of a head and just really worked tremendously well. It came out at the same time as the Alpha Double Black Diamond, but I found that the Great Big Bertha seemed to just work brilliantly. Here's a clip. I think I might have even been at Trafford when I first tested this. Number five, now this is an old driver, but they've not brought out a remodel yet. And it's the Titleist 915s, the D2 and the D3. The D4 I've never managed to get my hands on, which is the smaller low spinning version, but the D2 and D3, I love those golf clubs, I really do. It had the, the channel behind the face, which helped optimize ball speed. I think the crown of it was fantastic. It had that kind of sparkle finish to the top of the head. Very, very good looking club, very much geared towards the players, but actually brought out a club that would general public could use as well. Normal golfers could use the D2. Uh, I had the D3 in the bag for a short while and really liked it. Like I say, it's probably verging on the area of nine, uh, 2015, this driver, but they've not brought a new one out since, so it still is in 2016 as well. Uh, where was I when I tested this? I can't remember, but here's a clip anyway. Okay, number four is the Nike Vaporfly Pro. Now looking past the bold colors of the, the, the blue and the vault, this is an awesome golf club. I've chosen the Pro in this list because I found that that one out of the three of them, I hit the best. So you had the Vaporfly, uh, which is the bigger version and, and the silver face with still the blue crown. And then you had the Flex 440, which I wanted to like, but just never quite works for me. 
The Vaporfly Pro was so close to going in the bag this year. It just, I just couldn't see past the colors. Well, I'm glad to report now they have actually brought out a limited edition black version, which is awesome. Awesome, that does look smart. Um, but the Nike Vaporfly Pro, here's a little clip of me hitting it, and it is a flying machine. Okay, so we get to the top three drivers. Number three is gonna be the Ping G Series. Now, just Ping G Series as a whole. The G driver is phenomenal. I really love it. They've, checked, they've kept stuck with the turbulators, but now they've got Dragonfly technology on the crown where they've stripped the weight and stuck it in the bottom, and the Vortex on the back, which helps with the airflow. Massive big crown, I love the finish of it. I think it's a great driver for everyone. Everyone, honestly, it is fantastic. Then the bonus that they've got the LS Tech version, which is the low spin version where they've moved the center of gravity forward. And they've got the SF Tech version, which is for straight flight to stop the slicers. I just think it's a very, the, the, the G series as a whole captures every golfer. I really love the G LS Tech. I thought it was a fantastic club. And again, another contender to go in the bag, it really was. For me, it was just a little bit too loud, funny enough. It didn't quite give the sound I wanted. Here's a clip of me hitting it, and I, and honestly, I really did love this driver. Okay, so we've now moved to the top two. In second place comes the Callaway XR16. And again, it's the range of XR16s. This came out as a replacement for the X, very successful XR driver. Very successful. They brought out the XR16, I thought, what are they gonna do different? Well, they actually got Boeing, the airline company, on board to make this driver more aerodynamic. It looks smart, it's simple, it's not fussy. You don't have to move the weights. It is just a very simplistic design. You have the XR16 normal version, you have the XR16 Pro. You also have the XR16 Sub-Zero, which is a driver I've only re recently reviewed, which has a slightly different finish, a more glossy finish compared to the matte. They are flying machines, they really are. And what I like about these drivers as well is it still offers a high level of forgiveness. Very good drivers, worth having a look at, and they're number two. Okay, so the number one driver for 2016, this is the TaylorMade M2. The TaylorMade M2. It, it's just, it does everything. It's what the M1 kind of could have been. It's not fussy. It still has the same amazing looks of the M1. The composite crown, the black and the white. Apart from the stupid idea that TaylorMade called it the M2, they should have never called it that in a million years because everyone thought it was a replacement. Effectively, it was just a cheaper model of the M1 without the adjustability. Loads of good players have been using it. Finchie, my, my good friend, has been using it in the bag. It is a flying machine. It does everything that the M1 does, but it's simple. And it's much less price point. I love the M M2. I thought it was a fantastic club. A bit of a shock release. I didn't think they were going to bring it out. It gets the same numbers as the M1. And here's a final clip of me hitting the M2 and really loving this driver. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the top 10 of 2016 drivers. Don't forget to stay tuned for the top 10 16 irons that is going to be coming out next. If you want to see the full review of any of these drivers, links below in the, in the description, you can see all the full reviews of these drivers. I'm sure there's going to be loads more coming out and I'm, there's loads of drivers I've not tested, I know. But these are the ones that I've tested and what I've found to be the best performing drivers for me hitting them. And I, that's why the list is compiled up. Guys, thanks for watching. If you are new to my channel, please do click the big subscribe button here. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, scroll down and click the big thumbs up. You can check me out on all my other social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I'm now on Snapchat as well. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the top 10 irons of 2016 as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon.